Hi guys, welcome to another video tutorial with me. This is the first video to another flower color guide series that I am doing. For those of you who've missed it, uh, I previously did a flower color guide series where each video touched on a certain flower and then at the end we sort of put everything together and created our own little bouquet. So I'll have the link to that below so if you're interested you can check that out and this is the second series based off the flower color guide. Um, I will be doing the rest of this series on my Bao Hong paper sketch pad, I guess, watercolor sketch pad, there we go, watercolor pad. Uh, it's fabulous, I love how um, the paper works and I think this would be great to do it for these series. And in the previous series, I used the Etcher, sorry, Paul Rubin's sketchbook, and that was also great. I ran out um, at the end of the series, so it was actually perfect. All right, so for the first video in this part two of the series of the Flower Color Guide, I will be doing the, how do you pronounce this, guys? Aga, Agapanthus? Yeah, the blue agapanthus, and this is on page 139 for those who have the book. You do not need the book to follow along with me, but if you have the book and you prefer a reference, this just helps you along that way. If you don't have the book, you can just look up this flower online and just find a visual reference just for color and if you want to have a close-up of how the petals and such look. All right, so let's get started. So as mentioned before, I will be using my Bao Hong watercolor paper, 100% cotton or sketch pad for this. So we're gonna be starting off on page one. For colors, I am using my White Knights set of 36. And for the palette, this is the palette that comes with it. So that's perfect. I've got some color on here already, but I'll be mixing some together shortly. And then for brushes, we're using the Princeton round number six and dominantly the miniature round number one by Zen Art Supplies. And I've got water ready on the side, I've got some paper towel ready and we are good to begin. So for color mixing, here's what I am suggesting. I am suggesting that we do a mixture of indanthrene blue and then some violet. For the actual flowers, we're gonna have to go super light, so that means we're mixing more water, less color, and then we'll probably switch between the two to get that nice gradient two-tone effect in our little flowers. And then for the actual greens, we're going to be using chromium oxide and maybe some green to highlight some dark shadows in there. And um, I think that is it. I think that should be good. If you don't have the green and you've got a lot of yellowish green and maybe some sort of brown, you can mix the yellowish green with some brown and you'll get something nice like this. All right, okay, so we're gonna start off by mixing some colors as I previously mentioned. So I'm putting the book down and we're gonna get some colors mixed up. And I wanna get dominantly I want to get more of a purple hue, so I'm going to get some of the blue first. Mix that in here. I'm going to get a little bit more, mix some at the top here. Then getting some violet, I'm going to mix that in. So we've got two variations of the blue. And we'll get a little bit more. Mix it over here. And what I will also do is get a little bit of white. Don't have to use the white if you don't have it. I'm just gonna get some and just sort of dab it into my mixture. All right, great, so we are ready to start. Now, 
I'm going to bring back the book so we can talk about some of the strokes that we need to be doing. And I will be doing a little bit of practice, so get a practice sheet, guys. And we're going to do a little bit of practice to get used to the brush and the strokes that we need to create these individual flowers. Once we have these individual flowers, we can just go right ahead and um, add the green stems to it and then the main stem and we're pretty much done. So here we go. So I've got some color on my brush already and what I am going to do is using the tip of my brush you got to make sure you don't have too much water on your brush so it's got to be nice and pointed at the end and we're going to add we're going to start doing these little flowers by doing the petals and pulling it downward and dipping the tip of my brush in water I'm going to go ahead and do another petal and pull it inward like downward sorry dipping again bringing another one and then obviously the one to the side one more here and then finally for the bottom we're just pulling down the water that we've or the color that we have from our petals and pulling it downward to get that nice long bottom for the flower And then for the green, I'm just going to rush into this green really quickly because what we want happening is while this is damp to get some green at the bottom. And then that's going to be the tiny little stem for it. So just grazing the tip of your brush and you're just kind of lightly grazing like this. So you'll, there'll be a ton of them. Okay, this, this is way too short but I'm just kind of showing you the technique before we actually begin. But lightly grazing. So maybe just take a sheet like I mentioned and practice getting these nice thins using just the tip of your brush and getting some nice stems happening. Okay, so that's one thing to practice. But then also practice the the strokes, um, I was trying to find the word, the strokes that'll give you, that'll give us the flower that we're looking for, right? And again, as I mentioned, I would like to add some blue to the mix over here. I just use purple or violet, the violet blue in Danthrene uh, mix over here, but it would be nice to alternate. So again, if I go ahead and do side one first, dipping the tip of my brush in water, I'm going to do the other side again, not again for the first time, then we'll do the middle one over here, then dipping the tip of my brush in water again, I'm going to do the next one, and then just pull the rest down downward. So they don't have to look perfect. You just need to get your practice in when it comes to how these petals are painted. And then there are some petals that are just going to be pretty much just closed up. So you don't have to do too much again. Add a little bit of purple into the mix or violet just to kind of get that nice variation and gradient effect. That's always pretty. And so if you want one of the flowers to just sort of face upward, maybe not all of them are facing directly up, but you know, like you can see the inside of the flower is what I'm trying to say. Um, what I would do is like a regular flower that we paint using the tip, pressing down, getting a little bit of another color, doing another one on the side and another and just kind of going around till we've got one, two, three, six. Till we've got six of these guys all around. Okay, leave a little bit of white space and just, yeah, allow this flower to bloom nicely as you paint it on your sheet. 
Okay, so fairly easy. And what we're gonna try and do once we start painting is try and get looser versions of these. Like I've shown you how to do, how to create these flowers using the basic strokes. And now we're gonna put it together and make them loose so that when we do a whole bunch of them, we're not sitting there toiling away for several minutes at a time. All right, so I'm gonna pause this and uh, you guys can go ahead and practice and then you can unpause once you're ready to start the flower with me. All right, so here we go. I've moved the color out of the way because I got my color on my palette already, so I don't really need that right away beside me, direct access beside me. So we're gonna go ahead and do this guy here. And I've got some of my pre-mixed color already from my palette and we're gonna go ahead and start this on a lighter scale. So I'm gonna start a couple of these flowers and I'm also gonna leave some white space in between deliberately. I wanna make sure I've got some nice lights and darks kind of spread out for all of these and then some background petals. So that's another way you could do this. And then just dipping to get some water. I'm gonna take the remaining water from the petals, pull it downward to get that nice light purpley bottom. We're going on, doing another one. Pulling it downward, getting some water on my brush to kind of lighten this, this one up. So I'm gonna get more water and let's do another one. This one, let's make it more, oops, added some of that over here, that's okay. This one I'm going to add, um, let's add it over here. I was gonna do one of the regular ones without the petals opened or the closed up flower. Then I decided not to. So there's another one. Let's do a couple more of these open, open guys and then um, we can fill it up with the closed ones right after. So it's easier. Pulling down the water or the color using water. Getting a little bit of that dark hue in there. Just get a nice variety of different hues. Mixes. Okay, let's do one. All about trying to find your areas where you need to add this. Uh, can be a little bit taxing at times, but that's okay. It's all part of the process in terms of learning how to do your compositions. And yeah. So I'm gonna do, so I've done a couple that are just closed up. Let's do a couple here that are open. I'm gonna do a, a couple of them right in the middle and then a couple over here just small ones that are kind of hanging around buds then and I'm and I'm using the image as a reference to kind of figure out where I want to do this and once all of these are in place that's when we're going to go ahead and do a couple of the <clears throat> all the stems not a couple all the stems need to then go in and we're good after that all right so here we go this one's like more of an open guy I'm gonna do one more kind of peeking out this way just a closed closed guy 
and one more around here. I'm getting a little bit of that blue now. Just going to add some in there. I need to disperse some of the blue versions in here and around in between the purpley ones. That would be nice. So now you've got a good blend and mix of items with these different colors. I'm going to add one over here next to this guy, the closed bud that we have. Because <clears throat> some are like in between and if you're not a fan of painting in between that's okay you can sort of circle around it. I will leave that for you to decide. There's there's another one kind of upward here, so I'm trying to fill up these open ones uh, or add more of the open ones into our composition and then we can move on to doing the the stems. So here's these two open sort of guys. Here's one. I'll interject this one right below this guy. So we've got a nice gradient blend with that and then um, adding some over here. And all these ones are dried up already so I'll just add one more of a closed one over here and and perhaps one just kind of in between these guys. Okay, so now let's take this time to go ahead and get some of the green. And as I mentioned, either use the chromium oxide or use um, a mixture of yellowish green mixed with some brown. And making sure that your brush is nice and pointed. We're going to go ahead and start attaching these stems. So we want the center, so I'm going to start by getting a little bit of green at the bottom of each of these flowers. And let's get it right around here. It's a little bit of like attaching, um, joining the dots almost, sort of, game. Except there's no real dots, you're, you're just attaching the stem to the center of the flower. And just lightly, I'm just using the um, tip of my brush to lightly bring these guys together and joining them in the center here. And just a couple more. There's one there and a couple over here. And that's pretty good. Now, if you want to fluff it up some more so that it looks like there's a lot more happening, you can absolutely add a couple more of these closed guys and that'll just make it a lot easier for you 
to kind of keep everything nice and loose and light and not heavy with detail. Oh, here's one actually. I didn't connect this guy. And that's that, okay. So now from here, we're gonna move on and just quickly add the stem and then I wanna fill up the centers in between these guys just to make it fuller. So let's take the number six and get some green and get a nice stem going on. So here we go, the stem is nice and thick, I'm just going to do a nice organic looking stem and I'm going to get a little bit of the, the green just to highlight and get some nice dark happening right at the bottom here, the base, and then just a little bit throughout this stem gives us some nice uh, gorgeous shadowy effects All right, and that's that we're not going to do any flat uh, leaves for this so back to the filling up and the fillers that I'm going to be adding right here are just going to be a lot more lighter in in tonal range And so that requires more water and less color. And I'll do a couple of strokes to kind of show that maybe there's like some background flowers with that are open with petals. And then I'll do one more here. And then you see this is where alternating with the blue and the, the purple really come in handy because now you have, now you can sort of set apart one flower from the other and people are able to tell <clears throat> that there's just like a lot more detail, if that makes any sense. And then just towards the edges, if you just want to add some that kind of look like they're peeking out or slightly opening up. And again, this is to make it seem fuller and prettier. I will leave that up to you. Use your discretion and figure out where you would like to add these. Okay. I'm adding some, this is what I like to call fluffing. Just adding a couple of details here and there, adding some dotted light spots almost in and around and then we're done so just adding some of the green for the new added uh, guys that we just added in. And then once that is done, we are genuinely finished. Oh, actually, no, we're not. We need to do one more thing, and that is adding some nice little yellow to our centers. And we're just going to be using, adding them as dots. If you notice, they've got some tiny little yellow um, in the center, right in the center of the flower. So that's what we're going to be doing. So for the yellow, I will be using yellow. It's called, it's literally called yellow. So I'm just getting a little bit of that onto my brush and I'm going to go ahead and add a couple of dabs of these guys in the flowers that are already dried up and the ones that are open where you can actually see they're open and yeah, really not a lot of detail at all. This tiny addition of yellow really makes things pop and really 
kind of gives a nice contrast to your painting as well because guess what? Purple and yellow are contrasting colors. And so using them together always is a good idea. All right, so that's that. And this is the end result. So make sure you get it done. Make sure you tag me so I can see what this looks like. And I would love to see your work. So it's not just for me to see, but you know, if you want comments or anything, feel free to tag me on Instagram or on Facebook. And if you found this video or these videos helpful, please do hit that like button and consider subscribing to the channel as I put out videos on a weekly basis. All right, so stay tuned for the next one uh, or the next uh, flower that we're gonna be doing in part two of our flower color guide series. Thanks guys for watching and we will chat soon. Bye.